Right now, slow moving storms around the Midlands have prompted an alert day and they could bring minor flooding. Meteorologist Kevin Arnone is in the weather center with a look at your forecast so far. Kevin starting off as a nice Sunday. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. Plenty of sunshine out there. Certainly more humid today than the past couple of days and we saw those temperatures really bump up into the 90s, but the first alert radar starting to get a little active right now, especially south of Columbia. We are seeing a few showers over the Swansea area I'll just moved through Gaston as well and you can see we're over by 26 closer to Nisa's St. Matthews and they're really not moving too fast at all only about 15 knots or so so that's why we are seeing a lot of heavy rain in the short period of time could see some minor flooding especially on some of those roads and the low-lying areas over towards Manning Summerton and over towards uh, continuing over towards 95 this is the bullseye area where we've been watching for these showers and storms to really pop up as we go through or really the rest of the evening hours so we're just getting started this is going to continue for the next couple of hours let me show you the future cast you can see 7 p.m. still dealing with those showers towards 95 but look at the scattered showers continuing just to pop up again. It's not going to be a widespread washout as we go through the rest of the evening, but watch what happens as the front finally makes it here and then settles down by 10 11 o'clock. We're going to be watching for some more showers and storms popping up right along that front. I think by 1 a.m. They're all out of here and then we'll start to dry things out. But as far as what we're expecting again, it's the heavy rain and it's the lightning that we're concerned about. Really not too concerned about damaging winds and certainly not concerned about hail, but the heavy rain with the slow moving storms could certainly cause some minor flooding. We have a great stretch of weather though in the first alert seven day forecast. Of course, we're going to have that coming up. Emily. Thanks, Kevin, and be sure you have the WIS first alert weather app to keep up with severe weather anytime it's headed for your neighborhood. The app is free in your app store. Developing right now, deputies in Richland County are looking for a murder suspect involved in a shooting on Fairway Drive. Deputies say they got to the home around 2.30 this morning. Several juveniles were inside, as well as 33-year-old Nakia D. Scott, who was injured. She was taken to the hospital where she died. Call one crime sc if you know anything about this shooting. And happening right now, protesters and counter protesters in Washington, D.C. as the Unite the Right rally takes place near the White House. This is a live look at that rally. Thousands filled up the streets of our nation's capital to protest against the white nationalists on the one year anniversary of their deadly Charlottesville rally. Raycom News Network's Allison Norlian is in Charlottesville, Virginia, with how the woman killed is being honored. A memorial now sits right here on Heather Higher Way and Water Street in Charlottesville. The community mourned here on the one year anniversary of the Unite the Right rally. Around 1.30, Susan Bro placed flowers at the site where her daughter Heather Higher was killed last year. Bro remembered her daughter and urged people to continue fighting white supremacy. She was shielded by the community and activists, many of who were at the Unite the Right rally last year. The mood was solemn as people mourned for their city, but the city also worked to find normalcy in such an awful anniversary. Many shops were open to the public, but some were closed as Charlottesville State Police and police from many jurisdictions around Virginia unfolded on the city to ensure last year didn't repeat itself. Although today was mostly peaceful, there were a few arrests. Those arrests happened after the group Antifa, otherwise known as the alt left, protested the police. For the Raycom News Network, I'm Allison Norleon. President Trump tweeted Saturday that he was condemning all types of racism and acts of violence. South Carolina Highway Patrol are investigating, investigating a crash that left one person dead. That happened near mile marker 62 on Interstate 20 eastbound around 630 yesterday evening. The Lexington County Coroner says 29 year old Jacqueline Philippe was speeding and lost control before hitting a guardrail and then a tree. The coroner also says he was not wearing a seatbelt. He died at the hospital. New at six, this home in Columbia Shannon community will soon be renovated. It's happening through the flip and give project, which involves the public's input. Our Genesis Narrows is live on Duncan Street. Jenna, how does this project work? 
Well, Emily, the project is called Flip and Give, and come January, this house behind me will be completely renovated all by the public's input. Now, to give you a quick backstory on this project, the Moore Company, which is the real estate firm doing this project, bought this house about a year and a half ago, and now they're working with an architectural firm to do a 24-week renovation where they'll be transforming this 1920 Shannon bungalow into an updated modern cottage. Now, here's the fun part. They decided to keep the public engaged by allowing the community to make some pretty big design choices for the house through voting online. So there'll be 10 votes over the course of the renovations where the public will be voting and deciding on everything from the floor plan to the finishes. And once it's complete, the Moore Company will sell the home and all the proceeds will go to a charity. So we are a young business, right, in the market. We've been embraced, we feel like, by, by the Columbia market and, and have been, you know, fortunate over the last three years. And we've been looking for some, some way to give back to the community. And this sort of made sense, right? It's, it's real estate, it's design, it's, it's engaging people in a flip. And, and at the end, it's giving the proceeds away. So we thought this was a, a great way to, to help give back to the community that has given so much to us over the last few years. And like I mentioned before, once the house is sold, all the, the Moore Company is donating all the money to charity. And the charity is actually a big part of this story because it's the last vote that the community gets to vote on, on where all the money will be donated to which charity. Now, if you'd like to nominate your favorite charity, you can go on our website, WISTV.com, where we have a link posted for you. Live in Shandon, Genesis Neros, WIS News 10. Thanks for that, Jenna. Right now, the Sumter County Sheriff's Office is looking for a murder suspect who they say is armed and dangerous. This is Demetrius Alexander Brown. Investigators say he's responsible for a shooting that happened yesterday at Auto Doctors on South Pike Road East. 34-year-old Charmaine Pack was killed in that shooting. If you know where Demetrius is, police say do not approach him. Just call 911 or Crime Stoppers. And we're still waiting to find out the cause of a massive fire that spread from one house to another in Columbia last night. The fire department says the two houses on Gervais Street appeared to be unoccupied. That area of Gervais near Hardin Street was closed for some time last night while crews battled that fire. As soon as we learn what started the fire, we'll update you on air as well as on our free WIS News app. Officials are waiting for more testing to determine how a person died whose body was found in a pond on Saturday. The Richland County Coroner has identified that person as 45-year-old Andrew Threat. The Columbia Police Department, the Richland County Sheriff's Department, and Columbia Fire all responded to the pond near Kempton Drive in Old Percival Road. That was yesterday after a neighbor reported seeing a suspicious object floating in the pond. The Columbia Police Department is now investigating. On Meet the Press this morning, former White House staffer and reality star Amarosa Newman discusses her new book, Unhinged, an insider's account of the Trump White House. She also talks about her relationship with President Donald Trump. People despised that I was close to this president, that I had access to him, that I talked to him often, and that I influenced his policy making. I will admit to you, Chuck, there were times that Donald Trump asked me to do things that were just downright bizarre. He would say, go and pull up this article about, for instance, Joe Scarborough and Mika. I want to know about this and that. I wondered, of course, why he asked me. I wasn't his press secretary, but it was because he was working around the people who would put these guards. And more of her interview is ahead on NBC Nightly News right after this newscast. Also looking ahead to tomorrow, commuters planning to take Bull Street should expect delays because of a more than $6 million construction project. The work on nearby Wallace Street is expected to improve drainage and water quality in the area. But to accomplish that, the city plans to close two right lanes on Bull Street from 277 near the intersection of Victoria and Franklin Streets to Wallace Street. Still to come, a teacher is seen on camera slamming a student on a table. What led to the incident and why the teacher says he does not regret it. All right, a few isolated showers out there right now. You can see that with our first alert radar. We are not done yet. We have more activity to talk about. Come back. 96 was your temperature on Thursday, Emily. Thanks, Kevin. We'll take a look at this. Despite recent heavy rains and powerful winds from monsoon in the Philippines, a young couple went ahead with their wedding plans there. Flash floods have been reported throughout the Philippines, forcing thousands of people to evacuate their homes. But one couple would not budge. The bride and her parents waded down the flooded aisle through murky water, 
right up to the barefoot groom who was waiting by the altar. Shocking video shows a teacher attacking a student next while the teacher says he's not sorry for the incident. Shocking moments caught on camera showing a teacher attacking a student. This happened at a Georgia school last year, but the video was just released and we have to warn you. It may be tough to watch. Michael Seiden has the story. Prosecutors say this is the shocking moment that a former Lumpkin County teacher crossed the line, grabbing a student by his throat while dragging him down a table in the school cafeteria. The 2017 incident caught on surveillance video inside Lumpkin Mountain Education Charter High School, which is an alternative school for students who have gotten in trouble at other schools in the district, resulted in felony charges against the teacher, Tim Gardner. And now for the first time, the 61 year old is breaking his silence, telling us by phone that he acted in self defense and has no regrets for his actions. I was in fear of a head butt or, you know, something like that, or if he was carrying something. I don't know if you have children yourself, but when you look at that video, I mean, do you justify your behavior? I mean, how, how do you feel when you watch that video? Absolutely. Garner says the altercation began after he asked the 17 year old student whom he described as a troubled teen with a violent past to clean up the mess he made in the cafeteria. In this video, you can see the student and two others messing around with a styrofoam box, passing it back and forth. Then Gardner stands up and asks the other students to exit the cafeteria. But when that 17 year old tries to leave, he didn't say anything up until, you know, he put his hand on me. And when he did that, you know, I reacted because he was right up on me. I just put him back because I didn't want to get hit. But the next thing I just wanted to, dump, you know, control his hitting hand, his right hand dominate, dominant. And that's all he hits with. You know, I've never seen him throw a punch with his left hand. But late Friday night, the attorney for that student sent us a statement which reads in part, Coach Gardner's assertions that my client is a troubled and violent youth is absurd, as is the assertion that my client initiated any contact with him. The truth of the matter, as the video clearly shows, is that Coach Gardner decided to subdue and choke a child for almost 50 seconds as a method of exercising discretionary discipline for a minor infraction in the lunchroom. The former teacher's attorney says they're trying to get those charges dismissed. Coming up in sports, Coach Will Muschamp has some concerns at the Gamecock safety spot. Plus, the Braves look to gain ground on the Phillies for first place in the division. Sports is next. Home run. No doubt about that one. Atlanta holds off the Brewers for the eight to seven victories. So Phillies and Brewers neck and neck as we hit the stretch here in August. It will come down to that September. Who can pull away down the stretch? We'll find out. All right, tight race. Thanks for that, Joe. Final check of your forecast right after this. All right, so how are we finishing <laughs> up our weekend, Kevin? Uh, a couple <laughs> showers out there right now. We're going to be dealing with these uh, on and off showers, these slow moving storms through around, let's say, midnight, but it's not going to be for everyone. So if you have a garden outside and you didn't water, I would just go water it because it's going to be one of those hit or miss kind of shower opportunities. Tomorrow, 30% chance of an isolated shower or storm for the afternoon, closer to 95. Uh, as we go through Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, though, guys, much hotter, mid-90s, feeling like 100. And getting a break from the rain, yeah, finally. We'll take it. We're back at 11. Thanks for watching.